Be fruitful and conjugate. Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. Bask in apple moonshine. Count up dominoes. Such a one mounting such a hill. Chestnutted high point of a county round by law. Imaginary hub of the parallelogram state. Parallelogram being another word for poem. April is June here, where rain runs to the gulf. And purple magnolia litter, bobwhite files, are becoming. But when the thing one carries uphill is round, its spiced contents clear. Why, the chaotic peaks of the eastern state line look like the slovens come to market. All bushel baskets and overalls smoking. Salamanders on moonlit balds will sprawl. And bats, like notes from cavern mouths, will spill, and slobbering black bears with a taste for a long cinnamon finish will put one not to rout, but in mind of one's return railway ticket. One runs from nothing without leaving something, empty but upright in memory of oneself. Thank you. And uh, please welcome Preston Sutherland. Hello. Thanks, Cecil and Christopher. And since this will be my first confession since joining the community at Berkeley, thank you all um, very much for having me here as uh, the Holloway Poet, as your guest. Uh, it's a real honor, and truly, it's been a very happy experience so far, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, thanks. Uh, I'm going to read just one poem, which uh, unfortunately is this one called Under the Mattress, uh, which comes with an instruction to performers, which I guess I now am, which is Estatico Manon Troppo. Yes, the realities of life. Yes, bonded to terms like these. Tap the sexual hinge and drain its cataract of factual oil. Dreaming, you are made to hide from the guard sent for you by some anonymous communist tyrant dictating the incommunicable erotic meanings of your missing life to the deserving middle, whose orderly urban sprawl on the blanket contempt could never sink lower, but merely does at will on board the massive and passive aggressive illuminous tugboat of split level grill, where none of this or none of which makes much sense now or at any equal time like this or then, where guards are all consumingly at large. How have a dream in which, to evade arrest, you squeeze your whole body under a mattress laid out intuitively horizontal, on which now superficially outlays, overcharged and wasted, an obscurely misplaced a British military observer, who is thereby on standby to be presumed innocent on the ground of his readiness to fall in with reality, not once but again and again by ever more expertly fucking his girlfriend, and once having been greatly squeezed under that mattress, and gratefully to be there, it is still being done more expertly to her on his better and better fucking to excuse the strange imposition of a life directly under his peacekeeping pounding ass. You explain without meaning it or strangely caring that who should remain at large on the tugboat or free would needs risk being captured in vintage language just like that or some of something even more and as it turns out to good purpose and to your profit since he the observer whatever he is why ever he is there whatever only option you can take consciously permit Permits himself to be swayed by these words, your words, to allow you, who are for one moment or just about by a minimum of perfect resemblance, his undeniable fellow stowaway in the Navy, on the destroyer of desire, and who would be a fellow stowaway of his by a yet greater quantity of perfect resemblance, approaching even the authentic, but for your time and time again inflexible demonstrations of fluency in the chewed out pillow logicisms of barely whispered high civilian, and your knowledge of its de escalating effects, like these. Uh, 
so as even while being non-stick all over, still somehow actually to be able to bear, since there is no immediate other option, sticking your body under the mattress and curling up there, despite his manifestly not caring to discontinue his fuck on it, holding himself up at breaking point where one more push will end it all. Come, all ye faithful, and once you are there, tucked in discreetly as the predicament merits between the base grid of black metal springs and the overhead white rectangle you keep dead fucking still. And for a reason you think should exist, but are not completely ready to know yet by yourself, even the whole evasively your stuffed in body does not upset this mattress or serve even to make it effectively combust or disastrously tilt or represent an unmanageable, unsexy lump or underlying protuberance pressed down in militant unison with gravity that would thwart any wound up military man in the execution of a truly professional fuck, who himself sometimes likes to use that very word, the word fuck. It's often used in the military, despite being exactly then as now, exactly its actual size and shape. After puberty, you just don't grow anymore. Under the mattress, you lay your arms out crosswise on your chest. In the ear pressed down against black metal springs are later heard and condescendingly listened to many mortal intimations of a tinnitus for eels. We are slaves too, and we live with it, as the alternative is just madness and misery. The guards do come, twice, eventually first, then right away, and when they do come, they are seen to be looking for you. But for that moment, gambled on a flat percentage of its untold parallels in infinities unpaid over time, you are suddenly transformed into, or suddenly just now are, or you suddenly get at last to be the actor Roger Moore. Not only someone you are not, but worse, a walking wasted opportunity to find a proper object with a bit of actually contemporary traction. Instead, you end up not even the epitome of anything, just him. As the mattress bulges, identity wavers back to him again. Then negatives fall from heavens like a shower of seminal coins. You are not some other actors you once should have been, or had wanted to be, or were told you ought to be, or could remember and list, or later had it known to you without ever being really spoken to that you must need to be, or couldn't find a way up to, or just naively relied on thinking you would obviously be at some other point, or whom only once in your life you could never truly care if you were or not, but were not in any case. But him... Roger fucking Moore, as he might identify himself in anger to an erstwhile fan who had forgotten his name. By now, <laughs> scarcely even a vanishingly salient figure in this world, worse than it sounds. So completely that, before you know it, you were born on the 14th of October 1927 in Stockwell, now part of the London borough of Lambeth, the only child of a cis policeman and his archaic housewife. You attended Battersea Grammar School and were evacuated to Holsworth. Worthy, Devon, during the war. You later attended the College of the Venerable Bede, but never graduated. The fit is almost wastefully exact, or else you split in two and scream, untrue! What does the end of that story do at first but never mean again? Under conscious pressure, liberalised to the cognitive equivalent of light-touch community policing, your new name, the actor, is spectacularly descrambled into groom, ogre, fuck her more, germ, erogenous gore, me, or who, her room, germaline, and or, and is the substitute for the more primary Sean Connery, himself also more or less absolutely the utmost figure to pick. And I really do want to fuck you more hard, just as this dream dictates when you wake each elastic thrust to bury love in no tomorrow. As Roger Moore, for pretty much the duration under the mattress, you were just slick and oily instead of in any way primarily hard, more fluent in all civilians from your pigeon to your oratory, not prepared to just sit back and scream yourself sick, admittedly not directly compelling in the monotony of your plastic oversophistication, but indirectly mandatory as the best sublimated bright sadistic instinct, sexy to all the wrong people like the actual NSA. The guards cannot find you to misapprehend as they leave. At last this scene breaks out in scenery. We lay down together at the top of the hill in the thousands of wavering flowers, made level with all of the sky that extended so far that the fading and muting of distance on colour could openly paralyse and shine. And on the ground I held you, and in you held me together. I love you is an easy thing to say. Now you say it. 
bind your life around my life insanely slightly tight. Flood our perfect darkness with our best imploded light. Since my earliest idea of you, I have been shaking. Now I want you so much my skin is incessant, wild, electric. Identity is a death tax. Fuck the dark away. Become right. Down in the square where none of this mess is to matter, not being caught signifies nothing less than whatever. Because you want to be caught. Secretly, you want to be caught, to be made public, to be sexually reborn, to be extracted by love and purified, and made disgusting again. I want to be made disgusting again. But back on board the agnostic communist destroyer of articulated grill itself, this world, where this would have to be actually done, on whose only top deck the obscurely mock Asiatic tyrant is to be bloodthirstily beheld, rubber stamping in his manic depressive and way overdone productive waves of being, his warrant for your arrest in a sea of best forgotten, fractionally fathomless, 57% Mexican sexual froth. Never being caught remains the indispensable alibi for loving the wrong person forever. Thanks.